You're working really hard to teach your dog not to pull on a leash. You're also working to teach them not to jump up on people. You're out for a walk and this happens. When did you get a puppy? In this moment, you need a game plan and what you do in the next few moments can really impact your dog's training. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in today's video. I'm Kale McCann, this is Puppy Euchre. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. We're all looking for a dog that can walk really nicely at our side around any distractions or in any environment. But one of the most difficult things to deal with is the distraction of other people and dogs. And this can be particularly difficult if your dog really likes other people and dogs and it gets them very excited. This is actually something that we've been dealing a lot with with Euchre. She's not terribly food motivated, but she loves people. She would be happy for people just to come up and touch her and pet her all day long. So if I'm walking her along and she sees someone, the distraction of that person can often be really overwhelming and that's exactly what we're going to talk about how to deal with today. We can talk a lot about what to do with our dogs in those moments but one thing that can often be challenging is what to say to the people who are approaching our dog because often they see a cute little puppy, they see that you're training and a lot of people come in with those high squeaky voices and they're really excited and that can sometimes drive dogs a little bit over the edge. So one thing that we recommend that you do is don't be afraid to tell people that your dog's in training and even even you know, ask them to, uh, to give you some help. Often, if somebody wants to come up and say hello to my dog, I will often say, no problem, but do you mind helping me out? My dog's in training, I'm working on teaching her not to jump up, and I will just very happily, but confidently, uh, tell that person what I want them to do so that I can set my puppy up to be successful. I wanna to introduce to you the concept of a training target so you know what a target looks like. I want you to think about those different areas as different thresholds that you can use with your dog to make things either easier or more challenging as your dog's training progresses. So if you look at the biggest um, circle on a target, it's the, usually the easiest one to achieve, it's gonna be the same thing with your dog training. If you're working with your dog around other people, think Think about having those people stay in the biggest area of the target, the furthest away from your dog um, in order for your puppy to be successful. Now, if they're at a distance and your dog is able to sit on a loose leash, they're able to check in with you, they're able to be attentive, you can then have that person close into the middle part of that target. They can come in a little bit closer. And this is where, really where you're gonna need to work your butt off. Now, it doesn't all need to be perfect. It's okay if somebody starts to get close and your dog makes an error, but what you do about that error is going to make all of the difference. Let's talk first steps. So you're out for a walk with your dog. Your dog happens to see somebody at a distance. You can kind of tell they're going to come in to want to say hello to your dog. What's the first thing that you should do? Well, the first thing you need to do is get your dog's attention before they get locked on to that distraction. So I might interrupt her. I might use a bit of food. Hey, pup, what's this? Hey, hi, what's this? And I might lure her into my side and go to a control exercise that she's been working on. So she understands that when she's sitting at my side, yes, that she needs to remain in that position even though there's distractions around. And this is an obedience skill that we drill into them and when they're young to help teach emotional control. So my dog's in the control position and as that person approaches, I'm just gonna say, hey, how's it going? Just hold on, wait there one second. I'm just gonna instruct them to just sort of stop at a distance. Good girl, okay, come a little closer. Sir? Yes, good girl, good sit, yes. And my focus is gonna be more on the dog and less on the person. Now, if I see that she's, oops, if she's over distracted and she can't hold that sit, I'm just gonna ditch the food and I'm just <laughs> you're like melting sit good girly i'm gonna place her back into that sitting position and once she's on a loose leash there's my papa rooney i'm gonna yes and reward once again okay you can come in and try again sit yes now if she's able to hold the sit as that person gets close i can then say all right you can pet her good girl oops oopsie so i want her to maintain that sit even though she's being padded. So she gets up, the opportunity to be padded sort of is, is non, not on the table anymore. Try again. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl. Yes, now the next thing that I can do is I also could give her permission to go and say hello, but when I do that, I'm gonna keep my leash handy and I'm gonna instruct that person just to be calm. Now, another issue that we've had with Euchre is that if she's if starting to feel um, a little bit overexcited, sometimes she'll actually submissively pee. And it's even worse if people are squeaking and squawking and bending over top of her. So I'll often just encourage people to either stand up tall or bend down and, and sort of keep their body upright. And then I'll let her go and say hello. Good, okay, good, go say hi. Okay, go say hi. Hi, buddy. Off. 
Good girl, good off, yes. So good girl, yes. Now you don't necessarily have to food reward your dog in this moment, yes. She took the food there, but she could really care less. What she really wants is love and affection. And as long as she's remaining in this sit position, I'm going to allow her to get that affection. But I also wanna make sure that I have good control. So I also wanna train her. Euchre, yay, good girl. I want the ability to get her back uh, to me and when I want her to, but because she's a puppy, I'm gonna train her to do that. Shall we try that again? Okay, go say hi. You hi there, Paparoo. Go say hi. Hi there, Paparoo. What's go say hi. Hey, off. Hey, good off. Good oh, off. Good yes. Good off. Yes. Euchre. Yay. Good girl. So I let her go visit for just a moment and then I call her away. Let her go visit for a moment, then I call away. Keeping it nice and short and sweet. The longer I let her hang out there, the more opportunity there is for her to make an error so I can get lots of little reps in without her making a lot of mistakes. Now, she was really good. She didn't jump on Ken. But I did have my leash ready, and if she did, what I would have done is instructed Ken to stop petting. And this is where a lot of, um, you know, maybe less experienced people around dogs have trouble because often you can. Okay. Hi. Oh, you're the cutest thing in the world. Good. So. Oh. Ken's behavior is actually causing Euchre to jump up on him right now. So it's very difficult, see? It's very difficult to teach her what to do if I'm just allowing this to happen. And look, now she's starting to nip and bite at his uh, hand. She thinks this is a game. So basically, he's provoking her to, to make a poor choice. Oh, she says, I'm just going to be a wild animal now. So if I'm not giving her good information, you can see how she's just making poor choices. But if I set the situation up so I'm in control, it goes entirely different. It's not always going to be a person that's going to be the challenge. You might find that your dog is awesome when there's people, but it's maybe a little bit more challenging when there's an adult and a kid, or maybe somebody walking another dog. You might have to pick and choose what that threshold's going to be for your dog, depending on the different distraction level. And it's okay if they're different. You just need to be able to make good choices based on what's happening in front of you. We talked about the importance of distance from that distraction, but the other thing that we need to talk about is how distracting the actual person is. Sometimes when people are excited to come in and see your dog, they can't help themselves. <laughs> Where did you get a puppy? They want to react in a really exciting way. So it's really important that you coach them on how to portray their energy. You know, it's a good idea for them to come in and just stand and be still and be calm. Uh, be careful about the um, voice tones that they use, that they aren't using a high squeaky pitched sound, that they're just sort of speaking in normal tone. Eye contact is important. You may have them look away from the puppy if they start to get too excited. And if you have a real wiggle bum, you might even have them just turn your their back to your puppy for a moment until your puppy starts to settle and then they can certainly turn back around but you might have to give that person that come in that's coming in to say hello to your dog a little bit more coaching so that they can help make uh, the right choices and then you're going to start to see what works for your puppy and then you're going to have a few go-to moves that you're going to be able to uh, tell people when they come in to say hello now there could be times where you're walking across a sidewalk or an area where that distraction is sort of is forced to be close to you. So one of the tactics that you can do is just actually move off to the side. So I'm going to get her attention. Euchre, here babe. Good girl. And as I walk forward, if that distraction starts to come by, here girl, I'm just going to actually pull her off to the side to work my sit. Sit. Good girl. Yes. Excellent. And as that distraction walks by, I can then be rewarding her. This is a lot easier opportunity for her to make good choices than it would be if I was sort of stuck on that skinny bridge or on the side of the, you know, on the, the sidewalk. I want to change my location so that it's easier for her to maintain some self-control. And keep in mind, not everybody's going to want to see your dog as well. So it's important that she understands that every single person that goes by doesn't necessarily need to stop and, and say hello to her. She needs to stay under control with me and I'll either say yes you can go or no you got to stay here and and, um, and be under control. Our ultimate goal here is that people can come in and say hello to our dogs, they can pet our dogs and our dogs can accept that and be really happy about it but their four paws stay on the floor and they maintain some type of mindfulness. Now keep in mind when people come in to say hello to your dog if your dog is a little bit too overexcited and they're rehearsing being able to jump up and they're not really being trained not to do so it's a very self-reward 
rewarding behavior and it's not something that will go away very easily. So it's in your best interest right now while they're young to set the tone and show them what they should be doing differently in order to seek affection from other people. I've mentioned walking on a loose leash many times in this video and if that's something that you're still struggling with, make sure you check out the playlist right here. If you want to teach your dog to walk on a loose leash, come when called and just have great overall manners and you want our professional dog trainers to help you get there, make sure you check out our online course called Life Skills and the link for that is in the description below. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Euchre. Happy training.